On this video, I'm going to talk about the conditions that existed on the early Earth when life on Earth was about to start. First of all, you need to understand that geologically, the Earth was already much like it looks today in terms of plate tectonics and deformations of the crust, the process that shaped the surface of the Earth, like erosion, continental formation, volcanoes making land pieces, and then these land pieces colliding through plate tectonics and forming larger and larger land masses, then these land masses splitting and forming smaller continents, which then collide again, the supercontinent cycle, erosion, all of these things were already taking place. But it was the very beginning. So you don't have these very large land masses the way we have today. You had smaller continents and isolated islands around the world. And the world was much covered by a shallow ocean, uh, which came from the volcanic eruptions that we talked about in the previous video and the comet strike. Comets are rich in water, frozen water. That's pretty much what they are. So together, the water cycle uh, from the water coming from the volcanoes plus the comets ca caused the world to be covered by this shallow ocean punctuated with these small islands which are in the process of colliding to form larger and larger continents. That is the situation geologically and hydrologically on the early Earth. Now, talking about the atmosphere, the very early atmosphere of the Earth is probably unknown, but it's probably rich in things like hydrogen and helium and methane and ammonia, water vapor, carbon dioxide, things that come from the volcanic eruptions and from the solar nebula that was there in the beginning. But the lighter elements were blown off from the early atmosphere by solar winds because the gravity was not strong enough to hold them. So gases like hydrogen and helium became a minority in the atmosphere. Likewise, as the volcanic eruptions kind of slowed down and the Earth kind of cooled down on its outside, the methane and ammonia and carbon dioxide actually decreased. And the water vapor also decreased in the atmosphere because a lot of it rained down to form the shallow oceans. And you're left with an atmosphere that is rich mostly in nitrogen and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide coming from the volcanic eruptions and from pieces of the methane gas. And the ammonia, um, which is full of nitrogen and hydrogen, split by lightning, forms hydrogen ions, which get blown off by solar winds, leaving behind only the nitrogen, which became the most common element in the atmosphere. And there's also some nitrogen in the cloud to begin with. So that's why nitrogen is the most common gas in our atmosphere today. And it's still this case. Oxygen would not become a part of the atmosphere until much, much, much later when life became part of the Earth and the production of oxygen would actually increase and through process of such as photosynthesis. Which means the early atmosphere did not have oxygen. And that's a very important point because without oxygen in the atmosphere, it makes it more likely for life to have evolved. But remember, geologically, the same process which exists today were already starting. Hydrologically, you have a shallow ocean which is growing over time because of comet strikes and volcanic eruptions that put more and more water vapor in the air. This water vapor rains down and the water cycle begins, the evaporation of the oceans, and the water cycle will bring more and more salts from the early continental masses into the oceans and the process of salination of the oceans will begin. So all of these are things which are going to explain when we learn about uh, in, in Earth science. But if you have to paint a picture of the early Earth, you have to paint a picture of a place that has a lot of methane and ammonia in the, in the atmosphere, or a lot more than there is today anyways, but the majority is going to be nitrogen, just like today, with a lot more carbon dioxide and water vapor. And that's kind of how the early atmosphere was going to be like. And this atmosphere is going to rain down to form hydrosphere, and that's kind of then what the oceans of the water are going to be like. Lots of water, lots of dissolved carbon dioxide, a little bit of methane, a little bit of ammonia, lots of nitrogen, and so forth. And that's important because we're going to talk about the early Earth, and we'll talk about the conditions that led to the existence of life. These are the chemicals which are there, the chemicals that we call the primordial soup. Now, one of the most interesting things that people talk about is the idea that the overall atmosphere may have been a, re a reducing environment because it was full of hydrogen, methane, ammonia, water, and nitrogen. So it's an environment that lacks oxygen. All right. Now, this is actually very important because life, the chemical reactions that led to the formation of life would probably require the presence of an atmosphere that did not have an overall oxidizing environment that's mostly rich in oxygen, carbon dioxide, water, and nitrogen in the way that it is today. So the theory is that the early atmosphere uh, was probably not the way that it is today. The early atmosphere, according to a scientist called Operin, you know, and that's the one you see in the picture there, was probably an overall reducing uh, environment, leading to the formation of these chemicals as more likely than in an overall oxidizing environment the way it is today. Now, you may not know what reducing and oxidizing is if you haven't taken chemistry yet, what matters is that 
an oxidizing environment would probably destroy the, the, the early life, while a reducing environment would probably be more conducive to the formation of the small amounts of chemicals leading to the uh, origin of life. And so it would be important for life to be early reducing for the, for the, for the atmosphere and the hydrosphere to be early reducing in the very beginning. So another concept uh, proposed by a scientist called Haudin, JBS Haudin, is the idea of a primordial soup, that the early Earth was an ocean world covered by a shallow ocean which had reflected many of the elements which were in its atmosphere. And these elements were those that methane, that ammonia, the carbon dioxide, the nitrogen. And these elements form a primordial soup that is conducive to the formation of the chemistry necessary for the origin of life to occur. So, those are the conditions of the early Earth. The geological processes of continental formation were already in place. You have a shallow ocean that's already starting. The water cycle is already starting. You have weather patterns already starting. You have lightning and ultraviolet radiation uh, 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 as common things because you don't have uh, the ozone layer yet. Uh, you have a lot of lightning because of all the storms, because of all the uh, fumes from all the volcanoes which are erupting. You have an uh, environment that's mostly reducing, most likely, and you have a primordial soup in the ocean world that has all of these early elements present there. With that, we're going to talk about in the next video about how we get to the synthesis of simple molecules from this early primordial soup. I'll see you guys then.